very warm welcome from Austria to the LISEC webinar. My name is Thomas Feringer. I'm responsible uh, for machinery support within LISEC. And together with my colleague Andreas Robeck, uh, we will guide you through this webinar today. Our topic today is the creation of data backups from machinery PCs. Mr. Robeck will show you just with a few mouse clicks how to create that. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to give you some details about the webinar itself. Uh, this web session will be recorded and will be available for download for all registered viewers. If there are any questions, uh, please feel free to ask them in the chat window. This one you will find on the right hand side on top. Uh, there should be a button with a question mark. In this sense, I would like to hand over to my colleague Mr. Roek uh, and request a short introduction of herself, please. A heartly welcome from my side. My name is Andreas Robeck and I am head of Long Life. Today uh, I will tell you everything about uh, the backups, what you can do and what is the purpose of it. Let's start with the presentation. Here you see the brief summary of all the bullet points we are going through today. So. Let's start with the first one. What is a backup? A backup is uh, a complete uh, content of the hard disk saved in one file. You can restore this uh, afterwards and you have every uh, piece of data of the hard disk stored. A defective a uh, PC or a hard disk, whatever, can be restored within a short time. Otherwise, it will take a long time to get ready and to production again. The only problem is the file size, but nowadays it's not uh, a big problem uh, that the file size is between 5 and 15 gigabytes. The benefits of a backup. The PC without a working backup you have to set it up from scratch. This means you have to set up every uh, software. It means the visualization software, some, some uh, LISEC software programs, whatever. So this takes, the setup takes a, a long time. And the, the even worst one is that the, 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 the time to set up and bring it up and running with all the, 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 the parameters again, it takes days. With the backup, you have no additional delay. This means when you have spare parts on site already, a hard disk or a spare uh, a backup PC, you can restore this yourself or we can guide you through with the help of our uh, online service department. They will guide you through the phone. It's not too complicated, but it's a little bit more complicated than to perform the backup. But to this we will come later on. And the best case, of course, is that we pre-program the spare parts, the PC, the hard disk, whatever, before we deliver it to your site. Then you just can build it in and up and running again within half an hour, an hour. Okay, a uh, little explanation about the difference between parameter backup and the backup itself. Parameter savings can be done easily during production every time you, you change any parameter or more or less you, you will change recipes. This means the transport speed of, of a belt, the cutting pressure, the sealing amount in the, in the corners, whatever. This you can save par, uh, with on, the, on the parameter stick, on the USB stick or on the hard disk. This can be done within the visualization. This can be done all the time. The backup is a little bit different to this because it collects all the data and contains all the data of the PC. This is also everything regarding, uh, regarding Windows. The antivirus software is saved. Everything else, the IP address, computer name, every uh, parameter you can change in Windows is saved on a backup. Parameters are only based to the, to, the, uh, uh, to the process of the machine and so on. 
The conditions for backup are very important because the machine is not allowed to run an automatic during the backup process. This is very crucial because uh, the PLC, the Twinket, is a so-called software-based PLC. And this means that even when Windows has a blue screen, the Twinket system is still running and the machine is still running. You don't see anything in the visualization, of course, but the machine is still running. You can press stop. Everything is, is stopped in a normal way. That's it. But the, the problem is uh, the PC is, has still a, a CPU and the Twinket has users of this CPU. This means whenever there's a hardware driver fault or a wrong one, then it can stop the whole PC. So Twinket has no chance anymore to run. So this means every output will be stopped in an abnormal way. So immediately stop of all outputs because of timeouts, safety timeouts, and all access movement is stopped very, very abnormal. So this is not good. That's why we say, okay, the machine is not allowed to run in automatic. But on the other hand, the backup procedure takes only 15 minutes. The main procedure, which means uh, this is disturbing Windows, uh, Twinket, sorry, and this is only 15 minutes. The other thing is uh, we provide always a USB stick to store the backup to have it uh, movable. You can transport it somewhere. And the, the, the last process, the copy and the validation process takes about 20 to 40 minutes. But we will come to this later on when we say how it will be performed. Creating a backup. Uh, every LISIC machine with a uh, backup PC is equipped with a backup solution since 2002. When we see uh, 2002, it was a Norton Ghost program and we stored the backups on the CD. So we built in a CD burner. Yeah, the problem is to get CDs is, is not a problem, but to get CD burners is always a problem right now, but we, can, we have other possibilities with our software, uh, with our uh, service technicians to do this. But from 2008, we have uh, done this with a special USB stick, which is bootable. So you have to put in the, the USB stick, boot from this USB stick. On this USB stick, you have the Acronis backup running and you can store the backup on this uh, special USB stick. Special in a, in a way because um, the software license is in a bundle, a bundle with the stick itself so you can't transfer from one stick to another stick the the, the, the license that's why it is a special stick and again the recovery is done with the same stick you start again have the the the, the backup ready on the stick and can restore it to the hard drive of the pc where it's running from 2013 we used windows 7 and we installed the Agronis software directly uh, on Windows, but with the complex user interface from Agronis directly. This is a little bit uh, not really handy to use, but we have it all in the operation manual to do it. And from 2017, we decided to do a better thing we programmed a, a, a LISIC tool, which is the, the graphical user interface for the Acronis to have this process started and done within two clicks. I will show you this. Uh, you will have this from the Windows Start menu in uh, under Windows 7. Under Windows 10, you also will find it directly under this uh, in the start menu of Windows and on new visualizations, you can find it directly within the visualization. You don't need a Windows start menu anymore. When you start to create backup, you only have to press automatically 
because manually you can uh, change all the the drive path, where to store it, what to uh, uh, backup, and so on. But this is not needed for the for our machines. Everything automatically with the USB stick plugged in, and the process will start. The main process, the backup process, is taking about 15 minutes. Smaller machines, about 10 minutes, but roughly about 15 minutes. After this, when you see that the validation, uh, the validation process is started, you can run the machine again in fully automatic and produce. But not before, please. Because I explained before, you can get in troubles. And when you get in troubles, you have lost the same time as the 10, 15 minutes when you wait for ending the main uh, process of the backup. The validation process and the, the, the last one, the copy process. The validation process is because it is stored before on the second hard drive on the data disk. Then it will be validated and after this validation process, the copy process is from the data disk to the USB stick to have it stored in a portable way. This will take roughly about up to 40 minutes. These two processes are up to 40 minutes. Whenever you have the backup office is sorted successfully, everything is done. If you get an error message, you have two possibilities. The first is start again the whole thing. If the error message is the same or another one, then it might be that the hard disk is already damaged in a way that this can't be done automatically anymore. Then please call our service hotline and we will guide you through the remaining process. But in 99 or nearly 100% of the cases, you will get the message and everything is done. The last one is how to store the backup. Because you need it when you have a breakdown, then you need the backup. First, the backup is stored on the provided USB stick. So we provide the USB stick for the backup and we provide a USB stick for the parameters. The uh, USB stick for the uh, backup is also bootable. So you can boot up and restore it on the same stick, but it means that the actual backup must be on this stick, of course. Then. The backup is also stored on the data drive. The data drive is an additional hard disk in the second slot. So this is not the system disk, because the system disk containing Windows and all necessary programs to run the machine is a 32 gigabyte uh, solid state disk, of course, to have it more reliable. And the data disk is a normal uh, uh, hard disk with 320 gigabytes and on this disk 10 backups will be stored. This means when you make uh, or when you have already done uh, 10 backups then and you do the 11th then the last the, the oldest one will be deleted and the other ones will be kept. So you can do it. So we suggest to do it once a year or if you do major changes. This means, what is major changes? A major change is, for instance, when you, do, when you change the IP address of the, of the computer, or if you install uh, an additional software program, either from Lysac or a third party one, whatever. This is a major change. So please do within the next one or two weeks, on the weekends, because the time frame is not too much, we, we saw before, uh, do a backup. And we rec highly recommend to store them in a safe place. This is always, nearly every uh, uh, customer has a, a, a file storage system, which is also backed up and so on. So ask your local IT department. And we, re we are really appreciating if you send us the backups, because we saw that sometimes you, the backups are not found in the machine, on the server, or something like this. So it's always a good idea that we pre-program every spare part before we deliver it, just in case 
because everything goes faster and smoother. If you do so, we will provide you a FTP link where you can send uh, the files. We will also have a small description. If you are not uh, familiar with FTP links, not a problem. We can, we can help you out. The email address, I think everybody knows, the tve.service at lysec.com. They will guide you and provide you with a link in this case. So I want to thank you for your attention. And I think we will answer now all the questions which was raised. And I will give back to my colleague Thomas. Thank you very much, Mr. Robic, for your explanation of the backup tool. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you have seen just now for yourself, it takes relatively little effort to create such backups. But with such backups, you are uh, <clears throat> you can achieve the maximum security in the case of a breakdown. Should you still have problems or questions to this whole backup process, please feel free to contact our online support. Uh, the acquired happy to help you. Uh, of course, if you have still questions, please uh, write them to us in the chat window. You can also uh, drop us an email on tpe.service at lysec.com and we are quite happy to answer. Uh, we just received a question, uh, Mr. Robek. What issue might happen if backup during automatic mode? Uh, I tried to explain it before. Uh, the problem is that the Acronis is more or less like a hardware driver. A hardware driver can stop the CPU from working. So the whole PC will stuck. And the back of the Twinket, the PLC itself, is a software-based PLC running on the same CPU as Windows. So this means when the CPU is blocked, Twinket is not able to run. So the complete machine stops in an abnormal way. There is no change of or the out, all the outputs will drop immediately. So this means every movement is stopped in a, <laughs> how to call it, not so good way <laughs> because it stopped in an abnormal way. And the axis movement will stop immediately. So it's not as, uh, uh, stopping smoothly like it should. It's stopping immediately. Everything stops at the same time when the backup is um, the Acronis, the driver for it, is backing up some core components of the Twinket PLC. It, I cannot say it will happen all the time, but it's a, a highly risk and a good chance that you will have when you say one out of five backups, you will have these troubles. And when you have these troubles, you will, it will take more time to get up and running with the machine because sometimes you have to remove all the pieces and parts from uh, the, the glasses, the elements, whatever. So we highly recommend not to produce during a backup because it might happen that it will stop like you have a power failure. It's, it's nearly the same. When you have a power failure, nothing stops in a normal way. And it stops for sure. I hope this is explanation, a good explanation and no questions anymore. Andreas, we got another question from a viewer. Uh, for machines after 2011, uh, can the ghost tool be used? Uh, for machines sorry? after 2011, okay. can you use the ghost or not? After 2011, uh, no, because uh, the ghost is, I'm not quite sure, but I think that the ghost is not to be run under Windows 7, so this means from 2013 and under X P, we never used it, so I'm not quite sure. Because when we switched over to XP, we always used the Acronis and the Bootstick. So 
the, the Norton Ghost was also on a, uh, 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 installed under DOS of the NT systems. And so the Norton Ghost, may, maybe it can work under XP, but it's not the way LISIC is suggesting. So everything from 2008 onwards is the Acronist Bootstick. Andreas, another question. Is the backup process different from a KSR 25 and a KSR 33? So the process itself is, is not different because it doesn't um, make any difference if you have a KSR, a GFB, a ceiling robot, the gas filling press or something else. Uh, the only difference is the time because some machines have, uh, because when you have more programs installed on the system disk, it will take a longer time. So that's the only difference. And there might be a difference, of course, if you have different manufacturer years. So when you have uh, the, the XP system installed, it will have a different uh, usage. If you have Windows 7 installed, then it's another difference in how to perform the backup. Andreas, what about older machines like FPS from the year 2005? There is no such sync reading backups, or isn't it? Uh, we always equipped it with uh, a backup solution, but uh, I said before, the problem is the CD burner. The CD burner gets dirty and gets faulty. So after 10 years or even here 15 years, it will not work for a chance of 50%. So we have a, a different uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, in this case, you can uh, say you can order a service technician. The service technician will uh, put out the hard disk and will perform the backup with an uh, EDA adapter on his laptop with Acronis and will provide it to you uh, afterwards. Andreas, another question from a viewer. Uh, how can the backup be tested if it, the work is done or not? After the main process, so uh, performing the backup, the backup will be automatically validated. This means Acronis has a feature that after creating the backup, the backup will be validated. Uh, we have a good feeling when we say this because uh, we never had troubles when the validation process from Acronis is, 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 is done and performed in a good way. Then we have no, we have no troubles that it's not working. Of course, you can be 100% uh, sure if you try to restore it. So some customer is always trying to perform the backup and on a spare PC, on a spare disk or whatever, he's trying to, to restore it. And if this is done, then you're 100% sure. But also without this, the validation process is normal, a 100% chance that everything is okay. Uh, Andreas, the, the frequency of a backup, you told us you should do it once a year if you have a major change. Do you have any recommendation on how often do we should save parameters? The parameters uh, are different, of course, because um, uh, let's explain it in a way that you say, uh, when you take a look on the recipes, uh, the worst case for how often to back up parameters or to save parameters is from one shift to the next one. So let's say you have one operator in the first shift. He is going to use the machine in a little bit different way. So he has his own parameter settings because 
he want to have the recipes in an in a different way. So, for example, ceiling robot, he wants to have some more additional material in the up or right corner or whatever. Okay, the second shift, he's not going to 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 use this in this way. He has his own um, parameter settings and he's loading this back in the machine when he starts with the shift. So this means parameters will be changed from the operators. So it's up to you. When the operator can change it, he can change it back to the right uh, value as well. This means, so our suggestion for parameter settings is once a month, something like this, just to be sure when there's uh, some misadjustments from the operators, then you can go back to a, 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 a parameter setting one month ago and should work immediately. And you can continue pro uh, production without having exactly knowledge what has the, the last operator changed because he can't remember whatever. So once a month should be a good uh, uh, time frame for backing up the parameters on the parameter stick. Andreas, which USB stick do we have to use for such backups? Can I use a normal one from just around the corner from the shop or is it a special one from Lysac? Uh, when we're talking about Windows 7, uh, the provided USB stick is a completely normal one out of the shelf. So, uh, we also have the possibility on the Windows start menu that it will tell you uh, create, no, not create, ah, make stick bootable. Uh, that's the, 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 the name of the uh, procedure. And you just plug in a standard USB stick, about 16, 32 gigabytes or whatever, run the program. Every uh, boot programs will be transferred uh, to this USB stick and then you can uh, plug this in, perform the backup, and then you have a ready-made boot stick for recovering uh, the backup. When we are talking about uh, 2008 and Windows XP, then this is a very special USB stick because the license for Acronis is, uh, uh, is on this stick. It's hardware coded for the stick. So, this cannot be changed to another one. If you lose it or if, if it's broken, just uh, give your local uh, sales a spare parts department uh, a call and they can send a new one to you. Uh, do you have a recommendation for older machines like Windows NT with no USB support? Okay, um, yes, of course we do. Um, I mentioned it already before a little bit. Um, when you're unsure that the CD burn is not working again in the NT solution, uh, then you can order a service technician. The service technician will do this backup offline. This means he will take out the hard disk from your PC, have a special adapter for his laptop, have the Acronis program running on his laptop and will perform uh, the backup in a, in a special way on his laptop and provide you with a, 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 a CD. But if the burner is not working, then, uh, then he will provide a USB stick for you with the uh, backup on it. And the way back to recover it, you can do it the same way around you send us the backup and we will pre-program it for you before we send out the hard disk or the new PC, the spare part PC. Or you have it on site, the backup on the stick or just the backup itself. If it's on a stick or in a server, doesn't matter. Uh, we can send you a service technician. He can do the same way around and do the recovery because for this you need a license for the Acronis. If it's installed on the PC or on this USB stick, then you can use it. But this is a scope of supply of our machineries. But if you use it on a laptop yourself, you have to buy this license. Of course, then it's uh, possible as well. But then you have to do this all yourself. And of course, 
before we lose time, you have the spare part already on site, not pre-programmed, then give um, uh, our service department a call and they will guide you through the process, how to recover it. Can a direct copy of the hard drive be used as a backup? Of course, uh, because it's nearly the same. If you do a so-called mirror copy, uh, the problem is always that you have to use um, exactly the same type or the same uh, uh, volume uh, uh, amount. So when you have a 32 gigabyte, you need a 32 gigabyte. Uh, of course it can be done, but then you only have a spare hard disk. The, the big advantage of a, of a backup is you can restore the backup on every hard disk, regardless of the size. So, but of course you can do a mirroring like FileZilla, CloneZilla, whatever is the freeware part of it. But of course we can take any responsibility if it's not working or not. So we have our suggested ways how to do it. But if you can do it, of course, why not? It's the same thing. Andreas, uh, can we use one large, for example, a two terabyte hard drive uh, to do multiple backups from machines on the one, one hard drive? Uh, yes, of course. Because um, the, dat the, the data disk is selected automatically when you choose uh, in the program fully automatic. If you choose manual, you can choose where to store the backup. So you can then say it's not the D drive, the second hard disk, then it will be if you plug it in per USB, so it's a, a, a USB hard disk uh, external then you can say, OK, store it not on the D drive, store it on the F drive, whatever it is, and store it on the USB stick as well. So, of course, this can be done. Uh, another interesting question. Uh, what is with machines without back of PC, for example, uh, a VHW washing machine? from 2014, for example, how can we create a backup there? OK, so the machine itself is not equipped, equipped with a PC. So here we are talking about a, a, a standard PLC, which is controlled either with the operation terminal and the CPU in the switchboard or only with the operating uh, panel, the MBF372. So uh, you only can do a backup with a, a PC, so a hard drive. So on this is not possible. If you're talking about a washing machine with a, a loading display, so this means you have, but then normally you have uh, put your own PC there and our software is only installing the programs on it, the loading display uh, software. Uh, so of course, then, you can, our technician can do it as uh, in the same way as for all the PCs. He can do it offline. He take out uh, the, the hard drive and perform the backup on his laptop of this hard drive. But we are not, uh, um, normally we are not selling uh, the Acronis tool as a license because uh, at the machinery it's, it's like a bundle, like a UEM software. So it's it's not uh, for in, uh, um, um, consumer market, it's for, for industrial market. So we can't sell you the, the, the license of Acronis. But with this, of course, you can do it or you use other software and do it offline of the PC or install a, a third party product. It must not be uh, Acronis, there are several on the market and install it and perform a backup in this way. But we only can help you with uh, our solutions and with the Acronis software. Can you please tell us how to make a USB stick bootable with our LISIC software? 
As I mentioned before, you will find this uh, special program in the start menu of, of Windows 7 and 10. It's called Make Stick Bootable. This is a, a yeah, small program, program per LISEC, which uh, makes this stick bootable and transfer all the necessary uh, data. I'm not quite sure it is it, if it's uh, Linux based or Windows based, the boot up. I don't know exactly, but all the necessary boot programs will be transferred and the stick will be made bootable. For this, you can take any USB stick out of the shelf. So, <clears throat> Another question, Andreas, the current Acronis version, will it work to back up Windows NT PCs? Um, of course, because the Acronis will not make any difference between the installed operating system. It will only have, um, uh, no, it, it has no problem with the NT, the, uh, the, the NTFS, a format of the of the hard disk so this is the only difference you can format a hard disk in a way in linux it's it's a different thing uh, windows is ntfs or fat32 or ax fat the new one and so on so it doesn't belong to the to the installed operating system it's only on the file system so it makes no difference Andreas, if all the machines are existing, uh, which ones are not running uh, Windows OS, is it also possible to do a backup on them? So it would be the DOS machines probably? Good question. And of course, yes, we can do. Uh, with this offline solution we provide for our service technicians, they can uh, make a backup of nearly every hard disk. So this means we have uh, equipped our machines in yeah, 1996 with uh, SigmaDeck PCs, DOS-based PCs, and so on. Uh, of course, we can perform a backup from these hard drives as well, but only the offline solution. So there is no possibility to put in a, a boot stick or whatever because it's all DOS-based uh, systems. So you have to take out the hard drive and you can do this backup, of course, offline. And we can reprogram it before sending the, the, uh, the spare part, or you have it on your company, you have your spare part ready, and you call the service technician, we can do, uh, which can do uh, this backup or to re restore the backup again on the new hard disk, and he can perform it offline and build in the new hard disk. So with this backup, Andy, can you please tell us how to restore this backup now back to the computer? Okay, to restore is a little bit yeah, not complicated, but uh, if you do it only once or twice or every three years, you won't remember how to, to, to do it. So for this, we say, please call our online service and they will guide you through. So it's not the most complicated way, but you can do many things wrong because you have to adjust a lot of parameters to restore it in a, in a, in a, in a working way. Because uh, when you set up a new computer, you also have to check if it's bootable, was it, what is the system partition and so on. What is the partition itself? Is it bootable? What is the format of the hard drive? And this is the, the, the advantage of, of um, Acronis or any other backup tool, that this is all stored within the backup and the new hard drive will be ready-made for just plug in the new hardware, uh, the hard disk and run it again and power up the PC and everything is up and running. So this is a little bit more complicated, this process, and it's uh, not done once a year because it's it's not failing so much, but
but just in case you can call our, our service department and they will guide you through the process over the phone or we have uh, 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 some prepared uh, um, um, uh, pay, uh, documents to help you out with this. But this will take too long now because I will tell you uh, it will take two hours. But everything is, is, is covered over all the years. So the major, uh, the major important thing is that you have a backup wherever it is, but you have an actual backup so we can help you in a short time. Because with a working backup, again, with a working backup, you're running within hours. Without a running backup, you're running within days. So, and it will be a little bit too much for a, a webinar like this to explain all the steps. So, this takes too much time. Well, thank you very much, Andreas. Uh, we still have quite a few remaining questions, ladies and gentlemen, uh, but please don't worry after this web session. We will, of course, answer them via email and we'll make them available to everybody. Also, as I get asked a few times if this webinar uh, can be viewed later on. Yes, of course, as I mentioned on the beginning, uh, each registered user will get this link sent via email and you can download it, of course. In this sense, I would like to thank you for your participation and we're already looking forward for our next webinar where we will show you another helpful tool and tip. Thank you very much and goodbye.